Michael Douglas Carlin yeah. said that he went to a meeting uh, with uh, LAPD officers, and supposedly he had a heart attack right there and died. Um, that sounds suspicious as hell to me. I mean, it's like here you yeah. are, you, you're kind of ousted by the, the the people you worked for, and you happen to die at a meeting with them. What are your thoughts well, this on that? Kind of a, I, 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 well, this was kind of a double screw, actually. We got screwed twice on this one. Um, the first thing is is that Russ was actually at the L.A. County Sheriff's Department. He was at their headquarters when, when he died. Uh, and we got screwed twice because Russell and I, sometime earlier, had actually, when we got the confession letter from Chris Blatchford at Fox News, we weren't sure what we were going to do with it. The, the, the thing that we saw in the letter right away was that Reggie Wright's name was mentioned, and this letter hadn't seen the light of day since 1998. Nobody knew who Reggie Wright really was before, uh, I think, New, Nick Broomfield's documentary came out and then, of course, the assassination movies, but that was 2006. That was eight years after this letter had been written, and nobody knew who he was. So when yeah. we got the letter, and it, it, you know, there's some far-reaching things in that letter. It's, there's so much depth to that letter in such a short letter. And when you look at you know, all the details of that and, and the credibility that's in that letter, the only thing that we could think to do, and I, of course I called, I called some people that I trusted very much about what to do about it, what, you know, what do you do when you get this knowledge? You got one of two choices. You either go figure it out yourself and take a chance and figure it out and be Columbo and try to figure all that out, or you give it to the people that know how to do these things, Okay. So let's suppose for a minute that you have a hot lead and maybe these people over the past 20 years have kind of let their guard down because they figured that, you know, the heat's off. It's been a long time. Everybody's still looking at Orlando Anderson. So, you know, everybody's head's turned and maybe they've just relaxed a little bit, you know, maybe they can put Tupac hunched over dead on a console on the front of their record album. You know, maybe they could do that. Maybe that's an inside joke, but maybe there's no heat. And, maybe law enforcement might have an opportunity to kind of catch these guys off guard because you know how they roll. I mean, that's what they do. That's how they do what they do. And so yeah. we, we were at a crossroads with how we were going to handle this. We, you know, we said, well, what do we do? Do we, uh, you know, look at it ourselves? Do we have that kind of muscle, that kind of clout that we could go interrogate people? No. So what we decided to do was go to the Los Angeles police department. And we went up to the top of Parker center, the very highest, floor at the LAPD headquarters, and we met with uh, Deputy Chief of Police there, the head of robbery homicide, the, uh, another one of the robbery homicide investigators, and we left that meeting, and it wasn't even two weeks later that the LAPD leaked that confession letter. We got screwed. We got screwed by the LAPD big time on that one. I mean, when you go to somebody, we weren't even originally going to put any real names in the book, in Tupac 187, the book. We were just going to make reference to the fact that there was a letter that made some allegations. But they put it out, and they put the names on blast. It wasn't us. They put the names out on blast. The people that leaked it through LAPD put those names out there. So yeah. I was always curious to know – what Russ was thinking when they decided to go to when he decided to go to the sheriff's department, but I know that Russ had been meeting with uh, county prosecutors, LA county prosecutors. He had been meeting with some people because if the LAPD weren't going to do something about it, Russ was just wanting somebody in law enforcement to do something about it. We, you know, he talked to Jim um, uh, uh, Peterson is his name. I'm trying to think that the new sheriff now, the guy is the sheriff now. Um, Russ talked with him, Jim McDonald, that's right, Jim McDonald, the, the uh, sheriff. And Russ, and Russ and Michael arranged with Jim McDonald, the L.A. County Sheriff, to go there and talk to Jim McDonald about the case, about what the One Oak Club shooting that involved the sheriffs and Suge Knight and this theory that we had. And I was a little baffled by it, to be honest with you, because I couldn't understand. We'd already been screwed by one law enforcement agency. I'm not really sure I would have done it twice you know what i mean i wouldn't be the guy to go back and say hey you guys should just you know maybe you guys will do the right thing these guys didn't but maybe you will because you just never know about these guys you know they have their own agenda so russ went and not only did he not meet with jim mcdonald but he met with two other detectives and one of the detectives that he met with russell had had prior dealings with that hadn't been very good dealings let's just put it that way they they didn't really get along and then Russ drops dead of a heart attack right there at the sheriff's department. Huh. 
So yeah, that's he's not even that's meeting with the guy he's supposed to meet with, and then just right. drops dead. I mean, so I, I mean, yeah, I, I can imagine because you and him, you guys work closely together. Um, that was your friend. Um, yeah, Russell lived at my yeah, house. Same. Russell Russell stayed with me for a period of time. They were they were moving. They were going from one house to another house. And Russ actually stayed. Russ and his wife stayed with us at our house. I mean, I knew this guy, you know, like a brother. Yeah. And and I just it was not in his personality. Yeah, Russ would get upset about things, but Russ was one of these kind of blowhard guys that he could uh he could express himself outwardly you know, tell you off or tell you where to go piss up a rope or whatever. And, you know, you don't associate people like that with having like a heart attack because they externalize, they get, they get it all out. You know, they don't hold it all in. People that hold it all in get a heart attack. That's how they work. But Russ wasn't like that. So the fact that he had a heart attack still sits weird with me. Uh, You know, I'm not quite ready to go into some of the deeper, you know, conspiracy theories about, you know, what happened there. I, I do think it was odd. Uh, I wish he wouldn't have been there. Uh, I can tell you that. I wish he hadn't gone. Yeah. 